Okay, I am going to show how to rip a Blu-ray disc. This same procedure does work for DVDs, uh, but for this particular example, I'm going to be doing it with a Blu-ray uh, because a Blu-ray is a little more complicated, but I'm going to show the steps and how to do it. Um, I'm going to be using a copy of Gladiator, and as you can see on the my computer that it's in the Blu-ray player, it's important to keep in mind that if you are going to be ripping a Blu-ray, you need to make sure that your computer can read Blu-rays. It doesn't have to be able to burn them, but it does have to be have to it does have to be able to read them. Uh, so keep that in mind. Okay. So two things you need um, are some are two software. Uh, these things are free. Uh, the first one is called Make MKV, and the second one is called Handbrake, and it's right there on my desktop. Uh, both of these things are free to download, and I'll have the download links in the description. Um, so just keep that in mind. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to open Make MKV, and it pulls up this window. And what it needs to do is it needs to sort of scan the disk. And I believe that what it's doing here is it's going to start overriding those protections that are such a pain in the butt and as you can see now we've got it so you just want to double check make sure your source is correct um, you know because the label will have the title that you want in this case it's gladiator here's the protection so it's really simple you just click this button right here and then it goes to this screen here where it basically starts scanning the disk and what it's doing here is it's basically taking out all of the little bits of information and figuring out the navigation of the disk because a disk has a lot of things on it not just the video it has menus images different audio tracks like different languages it has subtitles you know it has all these things it has different audio uh, capabilities like stereo dolby 5.1 surround 7.1 surround sound all those things are part of this so basically it has to go through and scan all this Luckily, it goes pretty fast, so you just sit back and watch it. And I will be fast forwarding through some of these parts or skipping ahead, because a lot of this is waiting around, and I suggest that once you uh, get it going, you can wait around. But for this first part, you just want to stand here and, and go through it. So, uh, things to look at now. Once it's been scanned, you'll see all this stuff here on the side. We'll kind of uh, maximize it. You have the output folder. Uh, that's, that's okay. We want to put it in this new folder. Uh, as you can see here on the left, here are all the different elements. So the thing to keep in mind is if you just want to copy the video and just the video file only and not worry about all the bonus features, you're going to have to isolate out um, just the video or should I say the primary title. So basically, you know, 701 megabytes, 3 gigs, 4 gigs, blah, blah, blah. All these things probably don't need. So what we're going to do is we're going to uncheck these certain things. Um, now, this is the thing you want to look at. Primary title, 33 gigabytes. That looks like the full movie right there. And, and it has all the subtitles and audio um, capabilities. So we're going to keep that. But all these other things... They look like they might be just bonus features. We're just going to uncheck all of these things because we do not want to keep all these things. And I believe if you do keep them, make, MV, MV, make MKV, tongue twister to say, uh, we'll separate them out and you'll just have an even bigger mess to deal with. So all we want is just an exported uh, MKV file. So that looks good. Pretty straightforward. There's the duration, two and a half hours looks good okay so all you do now is you just hit this make mkv button and you want to create it yes and now it'll go um, this process may take quite a while so if you have to just kick back and wait or just let the computer run and you can go do whatever you want and I will go ahead and skip this forward Okay, so now it is done with that. You will see this little pop-up screen here. You just go ahead and say, okay. It'll go back to the screen and 
we can just go ahead and minimize this. So now here is the output file. As you can see, it's just one single file, which is nice. Um, we can go ahead and look at the info and we can see that it's Matroska 27 gigabytes. And so it looks like it's a really good quality version and it's nice because it gives us the highest quality so that we can then take it and recompress it however we wish. So that's all done and good. Now what we do is we open Handbrake. Give it a second to open. All right. Now from here, we want to go to the source and choose file. And then we go to where we saved it. And there it is. So we say open. Now it'll go ahead and scan this and it does it really quick. All right. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. Just like the other one, you kind of leave everything on default, but there's a few things that we need to kind of go through here. So we're going to first hit browse. And what we want to do is give it a name. This is an output name. So we're going to say gladiator. And here we can choose which uh, file format we want to save it in. You can save it in MP4, which is what a lot of people do. Uh, MP4 is a great codec and it ultimately decides on the best like sort of format for your player, whether it be a television, whether it be a computer and things like that. I'm going to go ahead and choose MKV because I personally uh, like my videos to be in an MKV format. It works good on my smart TV. So I'm going to say save. And as you can see right here, it has the destination is gladiator.mkv. So good. Uh, the next thing we want to do is we want to go through some of these tabs here. We don't need to worry about filters, but we're going to go to video and we're going to leave everything the way it is. The only thing we're going to change is the quality over here. Now, something to keep in mind is that the further right you go, the, the lesser compressed it gets. So the bigger the, the file will be. And the further left you go, the more compressed it'll get. Uh, it's automatically set to 20, which is good. It's going to compress it down and give it at a good rate. Um, but what we, what we want to do is we want to get a good sweet spot of both file size and good quality. So we're going to take this and knock it down. You can go to a 23. That'll give you about 2 gig file or so. But just to be certain, we're going to go down a little bit more to 25. Eh, heck, we'll... We'll do 26 uh, because I want this to be pretty small, about one and a half gig or so, just because I'm going to put a lot of my Blu-ray collection on the media cloud. So I'm going to choose 26 and you can kind of adjust this based on what the quality is that you want. Now we're going to go to audio and what's cool is it'll automatically add a soundtrack and you can decide what you want it to be default. Um, so because we copied over the information from the video and we didn't deselect those things, here now we have the option if we want to choose the France or the Spanish 5.1. Um, we can also choose any of these. Basically just leave all this the same unless of course you want to change these. Uh, bit rate at 160 is pretty good. You really don't have to change it. And then of course here's the mix down. Uh, this is important because you know when it comes to your surround system, you may have a 5.1, you may have a 7.1 or whatever. Uh, the Dolby Pro Logic is really good option to choose because it will basically be a stereo, but it'll know how to shoot it off on those in all those speakers. But it's nice because you can drop it down and you can choose regular stereo. You can do Dol Dolby stereo. You can maintain the 5.1 channels or the 7.1 channels. So this is something that you would want to change based on your uh, home theater configuration. Um, if you do have a 5.1 in place, uh, then I would just choose 5.1. Um, but I use these for a lot of things like television. Uh, we use them for the home theater as well. So I like to just keep it on Dolby Pro Logic 2 and just leave it at that. Uh, 160 is good. It's not too heavy, but it has a good quality to it. Uh, subtitles. You can add them if you wanted to, add a new track, things like that. Some people like to leave those on their ripped files. Um, I'm not going to do that. I don't really care for that, but you can do it. 
Uh, basically, that's it. You can leave the chapter things the way they are. It'll retain that information really super nice. And then once you're done, you just hit the start button. So I'm going to go ahead and do it. And there it goes. You can see down here, um, it's doing it. So basically now, it's just another waiting game. You just kick back and you wait. Uh, the thing about this though, to keep in mind, is that this does a lot, this uses a lot of processing power. And if we switch to task, mass, uh, task manager, I can kind of show you what it's doing here. You can see that my CPU usage is almost at 100%. So if you're doing this, you just want to keep in mind that your processor is being worked pretty strong here. So you probably don't want to be doing this while you're working on other heavy stuff. I would say if you're just doing email, browsing the internet, kind of things like that, you can go ahead and do this in the background. But if you're doing other media related or heavy processing related uh, tasks on your computer and you just want this to run in the background, just know that it's going to be using a lot of CPU power. Not so much RAM, but a lot of CPU power. Um, I have my CPU overclocked so that it goes a little faster. And the faster your CPU is, the faster this process takes. So, and I've even tried that where I had my CPU running at stock speed and it, it took about, I don't know, two hours. And then I overclocked it a full gigahertz over at stock speed. So it was running at like three three point eight gigahertz uh, Intel quad core hyper threaded. And it brought it down this it brought it down about thirty or forty percent. So uh, the faster your processor, uh, the faster this will go. So that's pretty much it. Now it's just another waiting game, and I'll go ahead and skip forward again. Okay, cool. So as you can see, uh, the queue is finished. So that means that our video is basically over. Uh, we can open it up, and as we can see, there's our original MKV that we ripped, and here is our final output right here. As you can see, it is two and a half gigabytes, a little more than I was thinking, but then again, you got to remember that this movie is about two and a half hours long. So uh, for a normal one and a half hour uh, long movie, you would be looking at more 1.5 gigabyte um, as well as you could then bump the quality up a little bit as well. Uh, so yeah, so that's that's basically it. Let's take a look at it, make sure it's solid. All right, two and a half hours, about two kilobits per second. Uh, everything looks good. So yeah, let's open her up and see how she looks. Cool, and you can see that the chapter markers are all in place. Movie's playing good. We can skip chapters. Yeah, looks good. Down the volume. So that's basically it. That's how you rip a Blu-ray player or a Blu-ray disc so that you can use it in your home media uh, theaters and stream streaming media and things like that. I hope this helps out. Uh, if there's any questions, leave, down, leave it down in the comment section below and I'll try to answer them. Uh, one thing to keep in mind or one, th one minor side note is that some people would say that you can just just use handbrake by opening the disc uh, the thing that I found is that if you if you do this, it doesn't always bypass the securities. Um, it can make the steps go faster, but like I said, I've had issues where it can't get past certain securities. So if it does work with just handbrake, then go ahead and do it. But I find that with these later Blu-rays with the higher protections, that the MKV, make MKV and the handbrake combo usually work flawlessly. So I hope that helps, and I'll be adding more videos later. Okay, bye-bye.